Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You're on to Highland Morning Show, and it's another edition for us to be enlightened. Dualism and multicultural and multiculturalism that has been in the region on a listen to the people's encounter. During the two-day event, they met with a cross-section of the population who expressed their views on what can be done to put an end to the ongoing socio-political crisis. But is it another talking therapy put up by government officials in the guise of putting an end to the crisis or a major step towards putting to rest the ongoing crisis characterized by ghost towns and operations, ghost town operations and ongoing violence? To better analyze this, state of affairs we have uh, participants uh, that will be helping us digest what is happening and i'll be co-anchoring this edition with uh, ayok john ashu good morning good morning regina and i hope you had a very brilliant weekend ah it was quite a great one uh, ladies and gentlemen we have with us in the studio powerful gentlemen dr nick nguanyam of popular and familiar name when it comes to CRTV Northwest and uh, Honorable Paulinus Joa, you're all welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. We have just uh, gone through another phase of uh, officials from Yaoundé coming to the Northwest region to put an end to the stalemate. Are we going to say this is the final bus stop? Or the other, there's more to be done. I'll begin with you, Dr. Lingwayam. When you say final bus stop, final bus stop for the commission or final bus stop for the co problems we've been going through? For the problems. Okay, I see. This commission is coming coming here to visit in Bamenda and to work with the people on the, uh, uh, at a very specific time. Specific time in the sense that, you know, we have been dragging on with these issues for long and time waits for no one, you know. When you when like like saying goes, if you a stitch in time saves nine, so as the government has been delaying, things have been getting worse, and you just have to wake up and stop losses. I think this is the moment where everybody is waking up to stop losses, and because if we just continue like this, we are all going to crash. So I think this this meeting in particular was of particular significance, and I was one of those who was encouraging people to come to it, because it was like the silver lining in the cloud. Yes, it's, it's, it's been cloudy. Yes, we can say without doubt that we've had more than seven or eight of those missions led by the Prime Minister and other people that have come to the region and, 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 and yielded no fruits. And so a lot of people were like, this one to would yield no fruit. But my spirit kept telling me this one is going to be different because the season is different. Now, um, Dr. Nick, probably you would have appreciated the fact that uh, there was this forum at all because in previous sessions there have not been plenary where people had the, op the op possibility of expressing themselves. Uh, the past were more or less like uh, target group discussions. That's right. Uh, um, you know, I... I must be very frank here. You know, I'm a very frank person. The last time that I attended any of those things was, I think it was on the 7th of February in 2017 when the Prime Minister came and we were all in the Congress Hall. And I got up and I told the Prime Minister, you know, things were just brewing then. I said, now look, the people have sinned. And the government has also sinned. Let us wipe the slates, forget our sins, and start again. The Prime Minister asked me, asked me what do you mean? I said, ask the people, they will tell you what I mean. And then he didn't take it. And you would imagine that if they come here to meet elites and so on, whom they meet, I don't know, because we've never sat one-on-one -on -one like this to find out what is going on, what do you think, and so on. So, you know, they come, I get the impression that they come, and they, they know what they are doing, but one gets the impression that they are not actually willing to solve the problem. Honorable Joa, the chairman made mention of uh, people to give the ideas without fear, partiality and sentimentalism. Do you think that was the case during the two days event? Yeah, I'd like to imagine that um, such was the case. But just that maybe they did not give enough uh, guarantees. That's why a lot more people stayed away, even though they were called to by... Uh, some other forces that people should not attend uh, the meeting. But uh, I think it was good that those of us who turned up spoke uh, honestly and uh, we gave uh, our fair opinion of what the situation is and of what we think and expect of the Commission and of what we think and expect as solutions to the Anglophone problem. 
Now, Honorable Jwa, um, it, if at all the Commission has opted for a participatory approach, it is because they also want each and every one to give his or her, give in or her, uh, his or her own input at what level, what was your input during that session, and what do you think can be your contribution in breaking the deadlock? I would like to think that uh, there is not much new that we could tell those people. They know all the problems. If you, especially if you th if you take into consideration that uh, Abu Machoi, who was on a special commission appointed by Ahijo, the then president of the Republic of Cameroon, since 1979, Abu Machoi uh, uh, lived the problems. He's known the problems. They've catalogued the problems since 1961. Musonga is. Uh, was prime minister of this country for quite a while so they know the problem so there was no point belaboring that aspect of the of the whole issue trying to teach them what the causes of the problem really are we know the problems but we should move towards what is happening today or what is not happening and then we look forward and what, what, what's tomorrow going to look like you see the anglophone problem which we must first of all identify and accept as a problem because it does. Do. And do you think that is a level of the bilingualism and multiculturalism commission to handle? Like I told them, I am afraid it's gone past their level. In actual fact, they have never ever had any competence to handle this matter. If you look at the terms of reference in the decree that creates the uh, bilingualism, bilingualism and multiculturalism uh, commission, they are just like a conduit, they're a transmission agent. They get what people say, people's opinions, and then they forward to the head of state. They meet once every six months. I don't see how truly this matter, which has been going on now since 1961, this matter, which is supposed to be, which is believed uh, to be uh, handled by uh, the uh, Bilingualism Commission, which was created about one year now, over a year. Over a year, January nine to two, January two hundred two hundred and seventeen, two thousand seventeen. What have they done so far? Why are they coming only now? Where are they going to end? They have come to the anglophone provinces that people like to fondly call northwest, southwest. I say no. It is the anglophone provinces. They have they have come to address the anglophone problem because they have anglophones in the other regions in the country. So there is an Anglophone problem. They have come to address that problem. Are they going to go to the other eight regions in the country? What for? The Anglophone problem must be addressed if we must have the roundtable dialogue that everybody is clamoring for. It has to be between Anglophones, real legitimate representatives of the Anglophones, by this I mean not Anglophones selected or appointed by the government to talk for Anglophones, but by people who truly represent the Anglophone, the Anglophone position. And you have them in the country. Honorable, we know um, you made mention of 1961. Uh, by then, probably uh, what we feel was it's a problem or the problem had not escalated. Now the problem is we are face to face with a problem. The way forward. The way forward, I'm afraid it's a difficult one. Like I said, well, like I started saying, this is like a locomotive train. When it's, it gathers steam, when it, it's at full peak, it runs and you cannot, you miss the train, you have missed the train. You miss the train, you have missed the train. So, but the ball now is in the court of the uh, Anglophones. At least they are the ones who decided to join their brothers in 1961. The future now should rest with them. They are the ones to decide what the future is going to be. Honorable, when you talk about Anglophones deciding what the future is going to be, exactly what do you think uh, they are supposed to do to decide for their future? Because we've been talking so much about dialogue and I've heard several commissions come in and saying they have been dialoguing and people are still calling for dialogue. First of all, what kind of dialogue are we talking about here and what are the Anglophones supposed to do to ensure their future is where they want it to be? It has to be an inclusive dialogue. 
By inclusive, I mean uh, you get people from all shades. You see, you get Anglophones in the diaspora. You get Anglophones who are here, back here in the country. You get some of the leaders who are even locked up. Let everybody come on board. But like I said, like I told the Musange Commission, it would not be a bad idea if we organize an AAC3, an All Anglophone Conference number three, like the one we had in Boya in 1993 and Bamenda 1994. If we have a number three AAC, I think the Anglophones will have the chance to come up with a legitimate position, which we can now present to government so that we can talk. This is what happened in 1961, when our parents uh, uh, met here in Bamenda, at the Bamenda conference, before going out to Fumban. We should be given that opportunity, in actual fact. It is not a favor that anybody will be doing to us. Okay, Dr. Nick Nguanyam, you've uh, <coughs> been one of those who have been talking, uh, proposing solutions about the Anglophone crisis, and you have a, a write-up, Let Us Stop War. Yes. What do, do you actually feel we are in a war situation? Yeah, we're in a war situation. We're in a war situation. It's not, uh, it's not a joke. Um, stopping the Anglophone problem, it's, it's very easy as far as I'm concerned. It's one of the easiest things. But... It has to do with um, human character. It's, I mean, we have lots of problems in Cameroon. Um, you know, I, could, I have a litany of them. But, you know, it has to do with the human person, the character. And when that character is flawed, getting solutions to things become very difficult. But if we could first address the character issue, then it would become very easy. A moment ago, you were talking about some people coming and saying dialogue has been going on, so many dialogues and so on. What I want to tell you is that they are very dishonest fellows. That was not dialogue. So already, if you are dealing with someone who is dishonest, you are not going to get a, a, um, uh, uh, anything out of it. So it's a character issue. It's a crisis of, of, of character, behavior, attitude. And in one of my write-ups, you know, I've been writing a lot, reading a lot. In one of my write-ups... I try to, to, to make people understand the concept of peace. I think it was rebroadcast here on, t on, on radio and the people really appreciated it. We have to understand when we say peace, what does it mean? When we say justice, what does it mean? You know, there's a phrase which goes, there is no peace without justice. In fact, as I meditated on it, I realized that the whole thing was not complete and that's where mis misunderstanding was coming in. There is no peace without justice, and you can continue to say that there is no justice without truth. So the concept of truth, that's the underlying factor. And, you know, I, I don't chew my words on this. 80% of us in Cameroon will tell lies. And that's, 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 that's really the foundation of problems. Until you start dealing with people who look at you in the eye and tell you the truth and face things as they are, we will never get a solution. So that is the fundamental issue. Is there truth? Once we can agree that there is truth, a lot of things will just fall in place. You will not have to, 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 to be dialoguing a thousand and one times because if you speak the truth once, it doesn't matter. You know, you could repeat it a thousand times. It remains the same thing. It will never change because there are not two truths to any situation. There's only one truth. And therefore, if you wake up in the morning and then whatever problem you want to solve, look for that truth, go for it, grab it by the throat, you've got it. Okay, and once you have the truth, everything else lines up, and just just what we have to do, and then that truth should be sought for and delivered in love. That is the bottom line, and therefore we really need that truth and reconciliation com co committee or whatever to look at each other eyeball to eyeball and say, "This one you said, I don't think you are speaking the truth because of this." This is face your conscience and really be truthful. But a lot of people have sold their, their, their souls to the devil looking for food, bread, and so on. So that is where the problem is. Until you have people who dissociate their mouths from their heads, you're not going to get an answer. So so do you think the Mosonga Commission is that truth commission that will represent no, the real not, idea? No, it's not. It's not. It's not. Because, sorry to cut you, because when I listened to, 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 to Prime Minister Mosonga on radio, he was talking about bilingualism. The problem of this country is not bilingualism. It's not multiculturalism. You could say that it's a little bit of living together. When you say living together, it's not about the local, uh, the, 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 the anglophone, francophone, lambda, as they say in French. I mean, local people, I, I am, I, you know, 
my Betty friends and uh, Bunda friends. I mean, we are in the Kache, we are okay. There's no problem with that. When we are talking about living together is the Anglophone community in relationship to the government and the, and, 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 and the policies that are put in place. That's where living together should be, where you respect Anglophones as a people, where, where, you, where, where you do things knowing that, okay, these people are there, we are also over here. Go look at the results of the, of the, of the last police concours and, 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 and tell me whether there's any living together in that. Living together means respecting other people, trusting them, and doing things properly and so on. You know, doing things so that others feel at home. Un point très. Now, uh, Dr. Nick, uh, just to come back to the question Regina put to you, uh, you've answered it in another way, saying that uh, obviously we are in a state of war, yep. but how do we come out from here? Coming out of this war is very easy. The first thing is for both sides to realize that even if we were to leave the war to go on for the next hundred years, it's, it's going to yield no fruit. It's a useless war and people are dying. Children are dying unnecessarily. Because when you say a war, you bring in military people who are trained to kill. They are not trained to think it out. Nothing. So they, you, you move, they shoot. Period. And we cannot continue like that. But again, you can shoot all the Anglophones, you still not solve the problem. So we should first real of, of us realize that, first of all, realize that the battle is not the solution to the problem. And realize that there is a problem that we need to really address. So number one, st just, just, just stop the war, either by, by the decree, decree that started it or anything. Stop the war. Then come down and talk about real issues and face each other, face the issues. The issues, if you face the issues and, get, and give if, uh, each and everyone their space, there will be no problem. Now, um, let me throw this question to the floor. Any of you will feel comfortable to uh, answer. Now, it, we are in a situation of war, as we've observed, and w a war can only be between two persons. Is there extremism on both sides? And what can be done so that arms could be laid down? I think definitely there's a lot of uh, excesses and I'll put the majority, the bulk of the blame on government. Government declared the war. Government has uh, the arms, but now they're seeing that they don't have monopoly of arms. They're now seeing that they don't have monopoly of use of force. They have forced these people, the Anglophones, who now in the name of self-defense have taken up arms. If you know the motto of the Anglophones, especially the AAC 1 and 2, it, are, it has always been uh, the force of argument and not the, the argument, argument of force. force. But today, what are we seeing? We have been pushed to the wall. And you know what it means when you push a child to the world, to the wall, who has been expecting so much from the father. And the child has to fight back. And that's exactly what Anglophones are doing today in the name of self-defense. No doubt. No doubt. That's some excesses. Can we legitimately say that uh, those who are fighting out there, whose faces we don't know, are really fighting for the majority? I would want to think so. Definitely they are fighting for the majority. If you look, if you look at the uh, what they call the so-called terrorists, the secessionists, I think they're talking the language of the majority. If they were not, their morale would be very low. The majority, in quotes, that is supposed to be fighting for the big Cameroon, their morale is very, very, very low. Honorable Jua, you are from Com. Can you go back there and talk to the population, explain to them the reason why um, violence might not be a solution? even to a real problem? Do you have the possibility of going back there to talk to them? Are you willing? Can you? I don't like to embark on a difficult mission, but I don't fear difficult missions. I don't fear difficult missions, but I must tell you from the word go that this one will be a very difficult one. See, to go back to a people now whose only solution, whose only uh, way out is to fight the aggressor, what do you want them to do? You see, if you go now, you're talking some language which they do not understand. You can be certain, okay, they might accept you, but they will throw away whatever you're telling them. I, I remember yesterday during the... Uh, during, Thursday. On Thursday during the... 
the meeting, the some people in the hall were of the opinion that the president of the republic should be the one to call for that dialogue and should be the chairperson of that dialogue. Do you think his presence has an impact? Yes, of course. Like uh, like you were asking a moment ago, whether Honorable Joa can go down to his village and talk. What will he be talking about? He has he, he could be saying if if we get this this what you will get, but he has no. He would just be suggesting and saying if this were to happen, that would happen, you know. But the person to stop the war is the person who started who declared the war and um, all all the, all the power lies in the hands of the president and actually he can he can make he can make make the bomb roll forward if he if if he really wanted to let me explain you see the musonge commission, commission was there right they were they had no other powers other than to listen but what if we were the president? Who would who, if the president were there? He would say, "Yeah, I think I agree with this. No, I'm 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 seeing this point in this direction and so on." So, we would, if if the president were actually decree. sitting there, if the president were actually sitting there, we would have moved. We would have moved. If uh, you know, you, some people would have been leaving that hall knowing where we where we stand. But again, all the, all of that information will be collected and sent to him, which which tells you that. You know he is the uh, he is the, the the solution to everything, and uh, I think if if we have not been having solutions, it's because again, as I said, you know the people who are supposed to have been you know feeding him with the right information they didn't do so, and that truth was missing, and that's why the problem is continuing. So if he actually gets the truth and puts his finger on that truth, the problem will be solved overnight. Now, just to ask again, uh, Doctor, we remember that. Uh, the former Minister of Public Service and Administrative Reforms, Gaga Aman Aji, uh, was assigned by the head of state to come talk to the people. Uh, don't you think that as of now, the head of state, from what uh, he gathered from uh, Minister Gaga, would have at least been abreast with what's happening on the ground? Yes, he would have, not just that. But remember that the, uh, the bishops wrote, a letter, and I understand they were trying to see the prime minister, the, the president. I don't know whether they ended up seeing him, but you know that that house too had a lot of problems with some people who are standing in the way, who are recently thrown out of government. You know what I mean? Um, so, <laughs> so when you when you have your house and you have some uh, some cooks in your house who are not behaving well, you end up you know creating a lot of problems for yourself. So with the last with the last government shakeup, we you know we begin to see that information that was blocked from the president will begin to rise up now like a like a like a good smoke to heaven and then um you know and and also on the ground there's a lot of stress on the ground so i'm of the opinion that a lot is going to happen now and uh, garga hamel might have taken information but we don't know whether the information actually got to the head of state uh, but i know and i'm very convinced that something positive is going to happen this time around Ladies and gentlemen, you're still with Highland Morning Show over CRTV Northwest. And we have a powerful gentleman with us in the studio, Dr. Nick Nguanyam and Honorable Pauline Joa, trying to explain and trying to enlighten the, the, our listeners and us here in the studio on what can be done to solve the Anglophone uh, problem. And I am with uh, Ayok John Ashu. Ayok. Do you think what ha was said actually during the, the two days event will go directly to the president without it being uh, twatted? I'll, I'll, I'll take that uh, yes, to the honorable. <laughs> <laughs> that's our fear. That's our fear that there might be distortions. But the Prime Minister promised you before ever he even launched. I the promise talks. is one thing. Uh, we know them, we yeah. know the regime. Yeah. We know the regime. And then we know that with this regime, a lot of people try to read the head of state's mind and tell him only that which will be pleasing to his ears, which is a very unfortunate situation. Honorable, uh, both of you are here because uh, you are opinion leaders. You are people who are well listened to, in not only in our region, but in the country. Now, all other proposals may be long term. What do you people propose as immediate solutions so mm. that things at least mm. can be under control before any other long-term solution. Just before he answers that question, I know you directed it to him, but let me just say something on the question that you asked before this one. You know, I was a little bit afraid because when I listened to Prime Minister Musonge talking on television and, and, in, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, putting the weight on bilingualism and things like that, it did not reflect all of that that went into the hall. So already that 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 brings a lot of misgivings because what he said 
except it was it was it was just some diplomacy and politics did not reflect exactly what was said in the hall and that already makes me feeling f- to feel bad you see i was going to say that it's a tricky situation you see if you are a leader and you are a guide you kind of have about two roles different roles you are with your people you must represent your people so it is tricky and risky for you to ask me here for me to try to answer that this is what i propose by way of solution to the present crisis let let the people meet they formulate their position they appoint their representatives legitimate representatives then we will know the position of the people Oh, no, but when you talk of let the people meet, who are these people? Of course, the Anglophones. Are you saying you cannot identify them in this country? Of course we can identify them. We had a referendum in 1961. We know who the Anglophone is in this country. In 2018, we can get the Anglophones who constitute a people internationally recognized. We can get them to come up with a, a common position, which we can present to government. If we fail to do this and we decide to be dishonest, then it will be too bad for us because we will not be looking for a way forward. Now, on Thursday, when the Prime Minister or the, the President or the Chair of the Commission, uh, Honorable Peter Mafani Mosonga, spoke and he made mention of uh, some solutions that uh, government has already provided as of now, and it looked like it was about three quarters of the legitimate request were fulfilled there were tundras applause you, you, did you of, share of course, did, did you share of course, in what of course there was no tundras applause that, that crowd that was there <laughs> except maybe you were in a different hall <laughs> i was right there there was no there was no applause because you you, you don't you don't, you don't misrepresent things the 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 anglophone problem is not a problem of teachers it's not, it's a, not problem a problem of, of a, a lawyers. lawyers no. The lawyers can only talk for lawyers. The teachers can only talk for teachers. It's not a problem of you giving appointments. It's not a problem of you making small, small gifts left and right. No. <laughs> if you fail to identify the Anglophone problem, then that is the beginning of failure in your attempt to solve the problem. That, that just speaks clearly that you don't wish to have a solution. So if you do wish to have a, 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 an, an end to it, address the problem squarely. Don't come telling us about oh, how they have uh, uh, created uh, uh, the Anglophone, uh, this thing in the, in the, be- the judiciary, the, 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 an Anglophone occupies the, yeah. judicia- at the head of the judiciary bench in the Supreme Court, the Anglophone. Heads, uh, uh, they, they have created the anglophone section in Enam. They have, they have two autonomous ministers. Bullshit. No, that's bullshit. bullshit. What were you waiting for for 56 years? That's bullshit. bullshit. <laughs> yeah, he said that, uh, at times they say better late than never. No. And uh, on a very serious note, uh, gentlemen, uh, this um, 18 month long stalemate is really taking a toll on the population on all sectors of life. And um, uh, you. Uh, Dr. Ningguanyam, besides every other thing, you are an education promoter. Now, what do you think should be done? We are already uh, in the summer holiday. We are looking forward to another academic year. Do things have to continue like this? No, things have, don't have to continue like this. We have to improve. I mean, we have to do something to, 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 to change uh, the dynamics on the ground. But before I go there, let me state again, Mr. Ayuk, I don't know whether you know it. There's the concept of the problem tree. How do you solve a problem? There's the concept of the problem tree. And uh, to understand the concept, a tree has got leaves, branches, main trunks, I mean, the, the main trunk, and then the roots. So when you are talking of when 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 you are a moment ago when you were saying that Prime Minister Mafamene Musonge talked about uh, some two some two ministers in government is you know this forward left forward center that is being very deceitful you are dealing with leaves but you need to deal with the trunk of the issue when we are talking about the anglophone problem we are not talking about leaves and branches we are talking about the trunk the core thing and the roots. You solve a problem by going to the roots. Let me put it another way. We have an, a, a eucalyptus tree. You know the eucalyptus tree. If you like, if you want to kill the eucalyptus tree, go to the roots. 
If you keep pruning the branches, you will never kill it. So there is a problem. Solving a problem means killing the problem. If you want to kill it, go to the roots. And that's what we are talking about. Doc, it's beginning to feel like we have different definitions of the Anglophone problem. Do you think that's also a problem? Because the government might be looking at the definition. Problem from their, from their own logic. And they will give you solutions. You know, they will tell the solutions to, to fit the definition of their problem. Because if actually someone was looking at the, at the, at the Anglophone problem and understanding the roots and wanting to actually deal with it, you will not create a bilingualism and multiculturalism. The bilingualism and multiculturalism and living together is dealing with leaves. It does not. That's why the, the commission doesn't have the power to address the root causes of issues. So, so you you you, you begin to understand the solutions and your understanding of a problem uh, uh, gives you until you understand a problem and you you sincerely want to solve it. You will not put the right solutions in place. And um, there's a concept which says that a, a, a problem is never is never solved at the level at which it was created. So we need to rise on our understanding and get to really understand it and have the political will to deal with it. Are you, in other words, saying that it was just a talking therapy as a form of chumba insinuated? But at least by by us coming to talk was something was a little bit therapeutic. You know that if you have a if you have a if you have a if you have a, if you have a, a pressure cooker, you know a woman, you know you cook. I cook too. If you have this, you know. A, a, pressure um, uh, coconut marmite or whatever you know it's, it's 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 boiling and if the steam is not going i can explode so sometimes you need to make sure that the valve lets us some steam and i think that was some steam letting exercise do, do you share the same views on the definitely rebel? i think it was good that's what like i told you at the start of our uh talk that was one of the reasons why in spite of all the insecurity in fact in spite of all the calls that people should uh, not attend the meeting some of us thought that it would be nice to go there, mm-hmm. not just to air out some of what we had, we have it or we had in our stomachs, but to make a contribution, because contrib- contributions must come from everywhere, from within the country and from without the country. And I think that, uh, as far as uh, this is concerned, uh, we made some uh, some strides. Now, now, honourable, can you summarily, for the interest of our listeners who were not there um, on Thursday, uh, give us? The res- a resume of your contribution to that commission? I tried to give uh, the commission my uh, view of what the problem is. I tried to define it. I refrained from going into the courses which I, conclu- I concluded that they knew well, well about, and maybe even more than I do. And uh, I told them that uh, we have a problem of uh, ignorance, we have a problem of arrogance, and we have a problem of greed in this country. As far as the Anglophone problem is concerned, a lot of our people, even including Anglophones, do not know the history, especially the political history, of the Anglophones in Cameroon. The Anglophones came as independent people, a a UN trust territory under United Kingdom administration. The UK was tasked to govern these people for a while under their trusteeship and prepare them for independence. Where is that independence? Francophones, a lot of our Francophone brothers and even some Anglophones do not know that the 1st of January 1960 is the Independence Day of La Republic to Cameroon. A lot of our compatriots do not know that the 1st of October 1961 is the Independence Day of the Southern Cameroons. A lot of our people do not know that 1972 which we all cling on to was a constitutional coup d'etat. The annexation that Ahijo had promised the UN he was not going to do or have over uh, uh, southern Cameroons, we had it on the 20th of May, 1972. The Anglophones found themselves helpless. They were annexed in the name of assimilation or like the subtle like to put it integration 
No. The Anglophone problem is one of recognition. This is my country. I want to feel a Cameroonian. We opted to come here freely. The Anglophones alone, Southern Cameroons alone, voted in their majority to join their brothers of East Cameroon who were already independent. But when you come and you are so ignorant of the history, what do you expect? You, you get a lot of them every Sunday on a lot of our TV channels and radio panels talking about the one and indivisible Cameroon. Yes, it will, it will be wonderful if Cameroon can be one and indivisible. That is what nationhood is all about. We try to build a nation, but you don't try to build a nation on fraud. Do you know that 1972 is more or less the beginning of electoral fraud in this country? Yeah, because it was a massive fraud. You were voting yes or you were voting we. <laughs> and from then till today, we have been having it. We have been having it. From one election to the other, you see massive fraud. The greed, I talked about three elements, if you don't mind. The greed that we have, that greed is not only amongst the uh, Francophones, our Francophone brothers. You have a lot of Anglophones too, who are so greedy. That when you think, if you're a politician and you think about yourself first, before your people, you're bound to fail. The moment the people get to know that this is your objective, you miss it out and you fail. They'll vomit you. Then not to talk of the arrogance. We see the arrogance today. Oh, ah, les anglophones, ils vont faire quoi? Ils représentent quoi? What can they do? Les chiens. Oui, yeah. No, imagine. <laughs> imagine a top official in government calling anglophones, calling a people, like I said, internationally recognized. You're calling them dogs. And he's still in office. He is still in office, on post. You imagine a, a divisional officer, senior divisional officer, writing, sending out a, a decree, or what do you call it, that people should evacuate their homes and look for safe places because the army is going to pounce on, on them. No, you don't do that. The Anglophone came here freely. They chose to join our people, our brothers, who had already achieved their independence in 19... 60. And when you get that, we have what are we facing today? Over in the, in the press, written press, uh, spoken press, you hear so much about terrorists. You hear so much about secessionists. Who, for Christ's sake, is the terrorist in this country? Who is the terrorist? You have a lot of state terrorism going on. They're, they're, they're raising out villages from existence, burning and killing uh, 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 civilians who do not even re really master what is happening. You are killing these people for what? What is their crime? What is their crime? You are the state. We expect you to educate the people. But on the contrary, you are sensi sensitizing them on what the Anglophone problem is and you are radicalizing them. Today, a lot of mummy them in the villages. All mothers. No. Ask them to send their kids to school. They tell you, ah, 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 ah. But this is wrong. It is wrong. Who, is, who has that responsibility? It's government. Then talk less of secession. Who is seceding from the other? Honorable. That's a question that we must answer. Yes, if we answer that question, then we see that the Anglophones, okay, if you secede from the whole and you go back to Yala Republic, you Cameroon, okay, then the Anglophones have a right to self-determination, then they'll go back to their independence of uh, 1st of October, uh, 1961. Honorable, let's, let's get uh, the views of uh, Dr. Ning Kwanyan, because in your right of Let Us Stop War, you made mention of the different uh, views or different approach. We have the secessionists, the uh, federalists, and those for decentralization. Which yeah. do you think is the way out of this crisis? If we, if we, if we go by the understanding th that the United Nations will want us to, to stick on for some time or whatever, uh, you know, then one would say that 
federation, a two-state federation would answer some of the questions. And, uh, in uh, you know, I try to say that though it's a t it would be a two-state federation, but not as it, it was, uh, it has to be, you know, uh, the West Cameroon and the East Cameroon, but you have to bring in concepts of decentralization so that people of the Southwest don't feel marginalized by people of the Northwest. You, you understand what I'm saying? Then, when you go on the East Cameroon, you know this concept of federation is not even understood by Francophones. That's why they reject it so much. And if you were just to leave the, all the eight, eight regions in one mass like that, the, some other Francophones will still marginalize others, especially the people in the North. They are they're actually marginalized. You know, So you need to bring decentralization within the federal thing so that the people of Marwa, Garwa, Gaundere can all be doing their thing. The people of the east, the people of the south, the Bamilikes, everybody can, can feel comfortable in their own house. So so you decentralization is not a bad thing, but it should not be decentralization, you know, it should not be the umbrella thing for the whole nation. It should be decentralization under the federation federal cap. Then it will work. And um, when when we talk about federation, we are saying that you know the the, the, the the different states will be able states and regions or whatever will be able to elect their their governors if at all the appellation will still be governors. They will not, this bullshit of government delegate will be gone, and then um, nothing like preface or whatever. You know, because I mean, if, if if we put it another way, the problems of this country are caused by all those NM guys. So. Um, so we really need to redefine things and do it properly and find out how countries like Rwanda function. Um, so federation is one thing. Then the next, you know, in the other subsequent paper, I said so. I said there was a need for federation. And then we need to actually look at our brothers in the diaspora and find out how we can solve their problems. Because they have been radicalized, they are out there, and they get the impression that they, the territorial boundaries have been shut, shut off for them. We need to open the door so they can come in and to come, in fr come and go freely. So we need to give them residence permits. You know, after all, we have ministers and so on, their children who have double nationalities. Other Cameroonians do have a right to have double nationalities. But if we don't want to give them, passports I mean we can give them residence permits the bottom line is to be able to come home and go then the third thing that I was saying was that we should have I think I have my paper here let me just look at it very quickly we should have um, our um, general amnesty for everybody this general amnesty is for everybody everybody in the sense that it's general amnesty for all anglophones for all people in the diaspora those who are locked up and then general amnesty for people who are in government they also need it so they should baptize themselves with general amnesty otherwise when things change they will be taken to the international court of justice and that time they will feel the heat it's very very important don't, when you are in power don't think that you always be there if you ask some people who are in Kondingi you now they will tell you that if they knew that they would be in Kondingi they would have fixed the place and then <laughs> there is <laughs> there is the transitional government the elections are coming and it's going to not be, uh, the way I say it is not going to be very funny so we need a transitional government to strengthen state institutions you know President Obama said that Africa has got strong persons but weak institutions we need to create strong institutions where and then to, and have people who bow to the institutions so if we don't reverse that order we'll be in shit so we need a transitional government to be able to do that and to manage the truth and reconciliation but, but we are in an electoral year which means that uh, we'll not be talking about a transitional government because uh, from every indications and pair uh, the constitution the presen presidential elections are due to hold the test of yeah that, that's what the law says you ask me what should be done i'm just telling you what to do so that you solve the problem <laughs> if you if you if you, the law is made for man man is not made for the law. The law is made for man. Made fact, by man. If you want the <laughs> elections to hold peacefully, yes, in this part of the country, yes, you must address the anglophone problem. Yeah, this deal with it. this this brings to mind what Dr. Ningwayam talked about general amnesty, and we have people who are saying that uh, bandits, uh, bandit groups have sprung up due to this crisis, and people who have actually uh, killed and committed cr crimes as criminals should they also be pardoned uh, with the general no, amnesty? There is a problem here. There is a problem here. You know. There is a concept, I didn't know about it until last time I learned from NEFCAM Radio, the, the, the phenomenon called dogs of war, you know, and dogs of war are not um, on both sides, okay? I mean, we heard, we heard on the whole that now the military people, some are going around and they arrest you, then you give some money and things like that. So that's, those, that's, that's the phenomenon of dogs of war. And so um, we are not saying, you know, even people in government, 
They, ha they have soiled hands. Everybody has soiled their hands. But if we are going to be very strict on that, everybody is going to feel some pain. Honorable? Yeah, I think that uh, we have to be very honest with ourselves. The people that... It, when you talk about the inclusive dialogue, everybody has to come on board. When you talk in law, you say that for you to get justice, you follow the law and you follow equity. Equity has a lot to do with your conscience. And that which is just is not necessarily just legally just, but your conscience is morally just. And if the law tells you that you steal a banana, you have 20 years in jail, and then a child takes a banana or steals a banana when hungry, you give that child 20 years, you are applying the law, but you are not doing justice. Now to talk of our case where we have a lot of double standards in the application of our justice. For Christ's sake, why would you take people arrested in this part of the country and try them in courts in Francophone Cameroon when we have all of those military courts? Let's imagine that they have jurisdiction over those uh, crimes. Why would you take them from here and try them in East Cameroon? It is, it is wrong. So you already see that there is a problem of the application of justice. And when you have that, justice is not seen to be done. When justice is not seen to be done, who will believe in the justice system of the country? The moment people don't believe in the justice system of the country, too bad. But that said, we can set these people free, all of them. The president has the powers. Set them free, even though they've put the final uh, 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 verdict. Uh, uh, verdict. But he has... Uh, the president of the Higher Council of Magistracy, he has the powers to reverse these, uh, these, uh, these uh, sentences. And if he does that, then these people will qualify to sit down and talk. Talk where? On a round table. It has to be a round table. Where there's no big man, there's no small man. There's no victor, there's no vanquished. Now, um, gentlemen, this problem started some 18 months ago as we've evoked and uh, from every indication it's taking a spiral effect and uh, many m more and more youngsters are evidently getting involved in it in one way or the other and uh, it is also a duty to sensitize uh, up the public out there uh, incidentally we are on summer holidays, partially, although some students are still, candidates are still writing their official examinations. If you both had a word for the youthful population, which is more vulnerable to all what's happening, what would you tell them? Stop calling them terrorists. Stop calling them secessionists. Recognize their right to know their history. Teach them their history. Talk with them. Talk with them and we'll solve this matter. Those of us who are going out, we know where some of us live the history of this country. We have never taken time off to teach the children who today are in the bushes, who today are taking up arms. We have never taught them the history of this country. But today, for themselves and by themselves, they have learned. They are not... They're not kiddies anymore. Even the kiddie, like I said, the moment you push him to the wall, he'll ask questions. And the moment you ask questions, you get answers. They have come to learn the history of this country by themselves. And they come to know their rights through their own effort. When they get to know this, they fight for it, regardless of the opinion of their parents. So let us, we must talk. We must talk. I feel sorry for... Some of you, especially, like I said yesterday, those of you of the Anglophone press, because you master the problem and you are Anglophones. But our Francophone brothers, when they keep calling our children terrorists, what do you expect them to do? Terrorists must take up arms. They have to defend themselves. So we should stop calling them terrorists. Stop calling them secessionists. Let us sit down and talk with the representatives of the youth. 
if I were to say something about that, I would say that, okay, if you asked us as uh, elites to talk to the youth, yes, you could talk to the youth, but what effect do you have? You know, there is, there is, um, you know, we, we, we are seeking, we are looking for effectiveness and efficiency. President Paul Biya just has to show up here and talk to his children like a father, and it's all gone. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We continue with our discussions over Highland Morning Show. It's here to be Northwest coming your way this morning. And Dr. Nick Nguanyam and Honorable Joa are with us in the studio hammering on what is to be done and what can be done to put a stop to the ongoing problems. And I'm here, Regina Ngalendoko, co-hosting this uh, uh, day's uh, program with Ayok John Ashu. Uh, Gentlemen, we'll continue with our uh, discussions. Uh, yes, uh, Regina, before we went over to Yaoundé for the news, uh, or we went into the newsroom, um, uh, Dr. Nick uh, was trying to elaborate what he sees like a pathway towards at least breaking the deadlock. Yes, um, it's very important that the president should speak to the people. You know, if he really wanted to speak to the people in a way that he should understand, he will, he will be best coming to the regions and, and talking with the people and actually talking like a father, you know, um, um, talking like a father to his children who have not understood him and he has not understood the children, you know, a talk in a, in a, in a reconciliatory tone, uh, not backing down at them, you know, talking in a way which says, I understand you, let's see what we can make out of this. And you will see most of the pro the guns go down, most of the problems are being solved. Then after talking like that, then actually, you know, set his government to be solving the problems and trying to correct what has been made wrong all this while. But for him to succeed, he must change this government. The current government that is there now is cannot solve this anglophone problem. I have said it before on television, on radio, you can give this current government that is there a hundred years, they have only a ten percent chance of solving the problems. Can you dismiss all the players in a squad and expect the coach to get new players and succeed? No, if if you have if you have a if you have a team that has it because it's not a, it's, it's a mindset. That team has got a certain mindset. The, the Zambian team, yes, nation, yes, national yes, team, yes, died yes, in a crash. Yes, sometimes and I didn't stop them from yes. Sometimes coming up with a new national team. If in, instead of you know like when you buy an old house. Instead of trying to repair the house, sometimes you just knock it over and then build build a new one. That's what we need. We need a new government with a new mindset that is God fearing. So to say that uh, the head of state has all it takes Correct. to break the deadlock. He has it. Everything. I, I, I bet you disagree a little bit. <laughs> yes, honorable. He can he can play a persuasive role, but he can never be conclusive. As far as this anglophone problem is concerned, he cannot come and decree solutions to the problem he must consult the anglophones have to take part yep. in the decision because that decision is going to concern them and like I said before I am afraid the more time we lose the more time we waste the further away from the train station the anglophone train move, move, move. Uh, they, have, uh, they must have handed the right copy to when you talk about expecting white smoke you're talking about <laughs> the big man giving a solution no you can only have white smoke after the round table discussion that's when you can have white smoke because they will have a decision which will be acceptable to everybody but the whole head of state is categorical that there is no question about the form of state i am afraid i am afraid i am afraid that is the wrong move for a father to take that is the wrong move the Anglophones did not come here by decree. You can never decree, you can never have national unity by decree. We could maybe uh, come up with some kind of uh, fraud and we do uh, some consultation. But by decree, it can never work. You and me, we are brothers because we accept to be brothers. Like our papa in Boya says, this na. Na, na njomba, can we stay? Yes. Even if it was a legal relationship, you have a divorce. There's a possibility of a divorce, which is recognized in law. 
But what do you want? You want to live together as husband and wife, even though in this case there's no husband and wife. You want to live together as brothers. So with you recognizing me as somebody having full rights in the family and me recognizing you as somebody with full rights in the family. Now, uh, Honorable, concretely, where do you think mediation can come from? From within, from without? From all angles. The government as a party to the dialogue can jumpstart the event. But the Anglophones, I insist, have to be given a chance to come up with their legitimate representatives. Because we must have people who can talk for us, okay. who will be given a mandate so that when they decide, we will accept whatever they come up with as decisions. If we don't look at it from that angle, then I think we're just we're looking for failure. Do we want to fail this time around again? At least let me see uh, success. Let me see an end to this problem before I, I check out. <laughs> or let M let Muketa see an end to this problem before he checks out. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah. Welcome back, uh, dear listeners. It's still Highland Money Show over CRTV Northwest. And uh, we are still discussing ways of putting an end to the Anglophone and crisis and honorable. Uh, Joa has been hammering on uh, discussion and not just discussion, but inclusive uh, discussion. Uh, Dr. Nick, do you think that is the way forward? Yes, the way you know, sometimes you, you have a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C. A plan A would be what um, Honorable has, uh, has, this, has, has said here. What would be the best way of doing it? Getting the Anglophones to, to, speak, to speak for themselves, get their leaders and so on. And they cannot have their leaders with the others in prison. When he's saying getting their leaders, that means everybody on board with those in the diaspora and so on, speaking like one man and saying we want A, B, C, and D. And say, okay, in the best case scenario, this is where we stand. In the worst case scenario, this is the, this, this, this the least we can get. You know, they need to come up with that kind of a package. And you need to have everybody behind uh, 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 such decisions. So it's very, very important. But for, uh, you know, I would want to say that for the president to be clear in his mind what, what he has to do, I would still want to say here on the air that uh, Prime Minister Musonge promised to to, 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 to give to give the the uh, a, a, a comprehensive report of what has been happening to Bamene here to the head of state and would want to believe that he would do that and 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 and, and make sure that it's very representative because if he if he starts pruning you know what he thinks he doesn't like to like the president to hear and present to the president what he thinks the president wants to hear or what he thinks would help him to maintain his post and so on then he would have killed anglophones so he you know and and uh, it is it is it is god you know he, he will have a case with god so he should actually just present the facts as he received them from uh, from the field to the president and not try to be too smart about it Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back. We are almost drawing to the end of this edition of uh, Highland Morning Show. And I know you've been uh, touched in one way or the other because these uh, gentlemen with us are quite uh, powerful, bringing to us various uh, opinions and various contributions as to what is to be done. We are already in the third term holiday and we know our uh, academic year for 2016-2017-2017-2018 has been badly touched. Do you see the same scenario in 2018-2019 academic year, Honorable? I think the responsibility lies with government. If like a father... They cannot do everything to make sure that children go back to school. Then it would be a very, very unfortunate sacrifice that the Anglophones will have to pay. A very, very unfortunate one. So the government should do everything to appease the parents and the children. Let them go back to school. Of course, I think we are sufficiently educated at the moment to be able to have schools go back and they will continue with the fight. If they are ready for a fight, we are equally ready for a fight. But the education of our children is not something that I think we would like to put, uh, uh, we would like to, like to sacrifice anymore. We, they, they have put in uh, one, two years is already enough. I think it's, 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 it's enough. It's enough. It is sufficient. It is enough. The government should make sure they do everything 
to have the anglophones send their children back to school Yes, yes. I think it's, it's very important that we all go back to school. There's nothing you can do without uh, the proper education. And even as we go back to school, I will say it here again that the whole educational system in all of Cameroon needs to be needs to be revamped because uh, even though we go to school, uh, I have issues with the quality of education that we have. So we need to go back to school. We need to do something to get the proper education so that we can have children with skills and understanding to be able to solve our problems. As of now, as, as I said before, a lot of children go to schools, you know, they can't have jobs because they can't solve problems. But my, my fear is mentalities have been changed when it comes to going to school. Do you think if the president or the dialogue commission uh, resolves, it will be easy to send these children back to school after many have dropped out, many have gone into bike riding, other activities that have actually removed them or re to remove their mindset from uh, main e uh, education, mainstream education? Mainstream education. I think that uh, it will be possible. You know, see that there are always uh, sacrifices, some, there are some collateral damages that you must uh, live with. So you see, but the bottom line is let the children go back to school. Let schools become operational once more. Mm -hmm. You cannot really catch up. There are some people who will, not, who will never catch up. But I think it is possible. If maybe those who have failed, maybe some people, you see, you have advantages and disadvantages of this situation. Some people, some children have learned some trades. They might prefer those traits to going back to school. So let, let's give them a chance to uh, uh, make progress in whatever they would have learned. But at least I think that the education of our children, which is a primary responsibility as parents, the government, as the father of everybody, should not joke with it. It's an internationally recognized right. It's a human right. It's a human right. And I hope the government does not want to be tried for violating this human right. Don't you think that uh, we parents too, we have a role to play in dispelling fear, rumor mongering and some sort of psychological fear of the unknown, something haunting you, a ghost so to say in everything we do? Like I said, if you're talking with relation to education, uh, I think that the government should talk with the parents. It's not above uh, this, the debate. And we can see how we will go back, we we'll send our children back to school without weakening our fight. We, we, our we, we, don't we also recognize the fact that uh, government has been putting in some efforts in terms of uh, securing the school premises to enable children effectively? It is not a, it's not a matter of gun or having soldiers with guns in the school premises. No, far from it, far from it. It's a matter of security, your feeling, inner feeling. The child going to school knowing that, okay, my, my father, uh, why, should the why should the child go to school with soldiers with guns. guarding the school? No, honestly. Why? Mm. I should go to school freely. The teachers should be there teaching. The parents should know that, okay, they have to pay school fees. But if you take all the children now and then the parents refuse to pay school fees, you see, it's like a collective effort. Yes. But I think that the government, the, the bulk of the responsibility lies with government. I would like to say that the, uh, in terms of what are we going to lose, you know, um, I, I like to use the examples a lot. You know, if you have, if you have oil in a calabash, and the calabash drops and breaks. Of course, you will try to scoop. It doesn't matter how hard you try, you can never scoop everything out. So I, I, I'm sure that illustrates what is going to happen with our education of the children. There are some losses, okay? But the bottom line is, let us try to scoop what we can scoop. That said, you know, the, the, when, when, we are, when we are dealing with these problems, don't forget again that concept of the, of the, of the problem tree. We are saying that if we can address the problems that have caused the anglophone things to erupt, then schools will just reopen. There will be no need for any stress and so on. Things will just fall in place. Just do what you have to do, and then the rest just falls in place. If you don't do that, that, that homework, then it becomes difficult to make the other things work. So just do, instead of fighting with leaves and branches, just deal with root issues, and everything else falls in place. Um, Regina, I think uh, from what we've gathered from our imminent guest uh, this morning, um, 
the Musonge Commission has come, listen to the people, as the mission was called, listen to the people mission. Uh, they have take home assignment, and uh, all ears are now stretched to the commissioners, the commission, uh, to get the feedback. And uh, we are all hopeful that uh, things will come back to the rails, especially as a uh, mediation is also a possibility and uh, probably just for me to find out from our guest uh, the church has proposed to mediate do we see the church playing a vital role in restoring peace and tranquility across the country yes you know of course that the church we always people always trust the church and um, I, th I think they should be at the forefront you know um, the church will be there. Then probably we have some people from abroad. You know, people have been saying the UN and the African Union. I'm sure that would give uh, that would give the the Anglophones, you know, some 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 um, some security or some uh, insurance that you know we are not going to be taken for a ride, so to speak. Uh, yes, every, everybody who is of goodwill and who has who is positive and open-minded should be part of it. Yes, the church the church should be leading. Uh, you just talk about uh, foreign bodies. Will that not look like interference? No, the foreign the foreign <laughs> bodies the foreign bodies are not there for themselves. The UN is not there for themselves. The UN is there for us. The African Union is there for us. The all the other bodies. No, it's not interference. You know, when you when you have something to hide, you call it interference. If it is interference that is accepted by both parties, then yeah. it is welcome. Yeah, then it is welcome. Uh, the church should do that uh, mediation. Mm. Yeah, any other respectable. Uh, uh, party that we the both parties decide on why not should come up it's a matter of trust yeah you know if i might just say something you know the bible principles are very strong the truth shall set you free it's very very easy so if you are going to be dealing with the truth and you have the truth on the table and so on it's like you can bring all the international bodies bring all the countries to be witness to it nothing would change you nothing would change from you it would only be that truth and they will only be witnessing that truth the problem arises if you are going to be tabling something or trying to do something which is not the truth as long as it's the truth without as long as it is the truth we don't even need all those people because the truth remains the truth for the next 1,000 years. The bottom line is, are we dealing with the truth or not? So that is the bottom line. Doctor, to add a little bit, to, I, you see in my politics, my days of when I was really a very active in politics, I, I like to talk about the true and the good. <laughs> Let it be true. Yes. And good. Yes. Then the people will benefit. Correct. The true and the good. If we can always get these two to go together, yes. it will be for the benefit of the larger majority of people. Correct. Ma many during the uh, Thursday event thought the traditional rulers have failed and uh, do you do you think they have a role to play in ensuring that mm. things get to normalcy? No, they have failed actually. The traditional rulers as I know them now, they have failed. They should just leave us alone and we try to solve our problems because sometimes g government fronts them, you know, and what they are speaking and so on. No, 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 they have failed. They should just leave us in peace. I am, I, I am definitely of the opinion that they have failed. You see, the once highly respected uh, traditional rulers of this part of this side of the country, who even belong to the West Cameroon House of Chiefs, today they don't represent anything. <laughs> they don't represent anything to the people. You see, a chief talking, a phone talking somewhere, and people are like booing at him and sit down and exercise some neutrality. Yep. Yes, but tomorrow you're going to see most of these funds going out on campaign trails and all whatnot. No. I, I rather perceive it a bit differently because um, I remember when the Minister of Territorial Administration was here, we saw him meeting with funds and, of course, uh, being handed the, uh, the peace, peace plan. plants, which are very symbolic, which portray the potentials and the will of the funds to 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 broker the deadlock or to to break the deadlock. So to I'll say. ask you a simple question: Did you see? Is it Paul Njiatanga who came here, or the Minister of Territorial Administration? The person and the personality. Okay, so your answer. Anybody who knows will answer, and that's it. Rest my I must case. say, yeah, I would say that it's not the peace plan that brings the peace; it's the character 
It's, it's about character again. Do you have the character? Do you, do you live with the truth? Do you dwell in the presence of God? Do you have respect for God and so on? The peace plan itself is nothing. It's, it's, it's a, it, it just portrays something. You know, I can give you, I can give you a 10,000 francs note, but what if I photocopy it and give you? It's still, it's, it's not, it doesn't have the value of the 10,000 francs note. Welcome back. And we are concluding today's edition of Highland Morning Show. We have uh, Honorable Pauline Joa with us in the studio and Dr. Nick Nguayam, Ayok, John Ashu, and myself, Regina Ngalenduko, have been coordinating. I think we'll have your last words before we part ways. Thank you very much. I've, I truly look forward to having peace in the country. I, 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 my heart bleeds a lot when I see people dying. And for people who have known me and my person, you know that I used to work with the government in the East and uh, what caused me to to, to, to leave government was the fact that a man called Abundolang Willis was killed under very doubtful circumstances. And therefore, I'm a pro-lifer. I campaign against abortions, all those kind of things. And, you know, when I see a life wasted, it hurts me. It hurts me a lot. And if I'm doing all what I'm doing and pushing in, pushing things, is because I want this peace to come as quickly as possible. Because each day that that passes by without the peace a lot of people die a lot of people are suffering and we need our, we need our brothers and sisters who are stranded in nigeria uh, under palm trees to come back home we need to be able to solve these problems it's very very important and we cannot solve them if we run away from the truth and we run away from the ways of god honorable yeah i think that uh, we need a uh, peace in the country we need uh, as leaders to be able to assist in the achievement of this uh, peace. But we must be very honest. We must be truthful. We must give the population only that which is good. The situation is really complex. A cube of sugar that was broken into two with a sledgehammer has refused to dissolve in a bucket of water and today we are where we are irrespective of the course of us getting to where we are I think we have that responsibility before man and God to make our contribution towards bringing change in the country and in a very honest manner you see uh, the Americans like to say uh I hope you will not edit it. Edit this when you. <laughs> you know, luckily, I'm live. We're live with you. <laughs> the, the Americans like to say that uh, you cannot shine shit. No matter the amount of polish you use, you cannot shine shit. Thank you. It is on that note we draw the curtains on this edition of Highlands Morning Show. I think you've been enriched in one way or the other. We had Dr. Nick Nguanyam and uh, Honorary Police Nusndra as our guest for today. Ayok. John Ashwa and myself, Regina Angal Ndoko, wish you a great morning. And just to let you know, tomorrow, uh, for our topic for Highlights Morning Show, we shall be looking at ways to cater for children during this holiday period so yes. that they don't yeah, get yeah, out we'll of... <laughs> and and, and uh, uh, Regina, probably before you finally draw the curtains, just to say that uh, our efforts uh, towards sensitizing the population as concerns uh, the uh, situation in which we find ourselves will continue. Our studios are always open to whoever wants to give an input because no input is negligible. And that is it. We say thanks so much for your kind attention. We'll be yours tomorrow for another edition. Bye-bye for now.